a little camera that will slide in through your nose and allow us to see your vocal folds and how they're opening and closing and how they're vibrating as well. So if you're good with spraying your left nostril. Is that enough? Yeah, oh, yeah, that should be enough if that happened four times. Yeah. First, I'm going to give you a couple different microphones. One is going to sit over top of your ears, so that way we have an audio signal for the video itself. And then the other microphone that I'm going to give you, this microphone is going to sit on the side of your neck and we'll velcro around the side. What this microphone is going to do is it's going to measure how fast your vocal folds are vibrating and then it'll coordinate our flashing lights such that it'll set up sort of a slow motion picture of your vocal fold vibration so that way we can see how they are moving while you are doing different vocal and singing tasks. That's not too tight on your neck there, yeah. is it? Okay, it's fine. Good. Let me just have you say E. E. Perfect. our primary camera source when we're using the flexible um, camera and then this is our stroboscopy machine so there's a light inside there that again will, will flash according to how fast your vocal folds are vibrating and it actually sort of offsets the flashing light by one cycle per second so if your, vibra if your vocal folds are vibrating at 150 times a second the light will flash at 149 times a second and set up that slow motion vibration look. So this is the flexible camera. So I call it my Coop's spaghetti camera. Okay, so it can sort of bend and twist. With this toggle on the top part of the camera here, I can steer it up and down. And then I can move it side to side as we're going through the natural tunnels that are inside of your nose that have been opened up a little bit by the afrin that you instilled um, before you came into the, the clinic room. And if you look up on the screen, like I say, I can steer it up and down, and I can steer it side to side to slide through the natural tunnels that we have um, inside the nose, okay? I'll put a little bit of water-soluble lubricating jelly on the end of the camera as well. That will just help it slide through, um, and then we will be able to see what we need to here. White balance the scope first so that the color inside is exactly what we want to see as well. What questions do you have before we take a look at things? Is it going to hurt? No. It shouldn't hurt. <laughs> you, might, you might feel a little bit of pressure as the scope is sliding through the, the nose, particularly mm -hmm. towards the back where everything sort of gathers together before we make the turn. But like I mentioned, we all have tunnels inside the nose, mm -hmm. and so the scope is a lot smaller than any of the tunnels that are there. And again, with the afrin that you instilled before you came in, that's opened up those tunnels just a little bit for us, okay? And you're in charge at all times, so if at any point you feel like I need a little break or it's starting to be a little uh, little more sensitive, you need to reset, let me know. And we can always either just take a pause or come out and re-administer here in a moment. But most people tolerate this really well. Um, and again, since you use that afrin to open things up, I think we're going to be well on our way. So you're in a, in a good sitting position, sort of up and forward toward me. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to see on the screen behind me exactly what I can see on my screen. So um, I may be in your way when I'm placing the scope, but once I get things into place, I'll try to move off to the side a little bit so that you're able to see on the screen as well. Okay? We'll have you do a few of our sort of standard vocal tasks once we get into place. And then um, once we're done with those, we'll have you sing a little bit so that way we can get that information as well. The big things to remember too is remember to breathe. In and out through your nose is best. Not through my nose. Yep, okay. yep, for at least the first part as we're placing the scope. Once we get into place, you can breathe through your nose or your mouth. That's a 
really matter. All right, so just tip your chin up just a little bit for me. Perfect. And just breathe nice and easy in and out through your nose. I'll feel my finger on the outside here. Beautiful. Nice and easy breathing. A little bit of a tight spot as you get to the back. Great job. Breathe in and out through your nose for me. Take a long sniff in. Good, and out. Good. Go ahead and swallow once more for me if you would. And just give a nice gentle E and hold it out. E. Take a breath. And again, E. E. Take a breath and try to do it straight tone. E. E. Beautiful. And take a breath and glide low to high. E. E. Good. Do the singing without strobasket. Sure. And if you're comfortable singing, I'm going to play the background so you sing with yourself. I had you swallow again because when you swallow, your tongue naturally pulls back. Mm -hmm. And when that little bit of warm tongue touches the back or the, the bottom part of the camera, it warms it up just a little bit so that way the air that you're expelling doesn't fog up the camera uh, when we're having a voice. So, so you, this is not swollen. No, no, that looks it's pretty good. It's supposed to look like that. Yeah, it's supposed okay. to look full. Um, you can see the vocal folds vibrating down below there. And it's a slightly different angle from um, from Maddie's video? Okay. Just a little bit, yeah, because okay. we're using a different type of, of camera. Oh, yep. okay. Yep. And hers, because in the, the magnification on the rigid scope is just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so that's why her vocal folds were like, boom, front and center y yeah. on the screen. And here we're getting a little bit more of the surrounding structure just because of the different type of camera that we're using. Right. And then I had you do it straight tone because then we didn't have movement of the structure around <laughs> it and really could just focus on um, the vibration of the vocal folds. You can see as you go to a higher pitch, the vocal folds stretch a little bit. Mm -hmm. As you go to a lower pitch, they contract. And we can really see it as you go from a low to a high pitch glide. We can see the vocal folds stretch. And then you can go uh, higher still by kind of recruiting some of that other um, muscle work. Your pharyngeal muscles squeeze in a little bit, but you have a great laryngeal movement. Um, we don't see any lumps or bumps or tissue change or anything like that on the vocal folds themselves. They're nice and smooth and straight and obviously very flexible and pliable because they vibrate really nicely. And then let me jump into watching you sing a little bit here. <laughs> What's really cool for me as you know a singer also to see is like part of your you know the, the the resonance that you achieve is kind of how big and round the chamber is that the air is passing through and your your arytenoids rock forward when you sing but I think that also helps to funnel the air and the sound up out of your larynx and then into this big huge space that you've created and so it creates some of that big huge sound that you can produce because you've you've really maximized the resonator and the resonant tube that you create with your vocal tract. It's really amazing to see. And so again, what's nice about using this type of camera um, 
compared to the type of camera that you used with, with Maddie, is that we can see what your whole throat is doing when you're producing these wonderful sounds versus just what the vocal folds are doing mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're singing. I'm all warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the very back part of your nose. So this is your soft palate. So when the reason I was oh. saying the reason I was saying breathe through your nose is that when you breathe through your mouth, that closes up mm -hmm. and doesn't let anything through. But once you start breathing through your nose, it opens um. up and you have a clear a clear pathway to get down. That is so interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Elise Deschamps and I am a Fu Chen Gui's teacher uh, for this our what, fourth year now? Fourth year. And uh, this is fascinating. Thank you, Ryan. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you, Mary. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, yeah, first of all, for you know, singing with you for four years mm -hmm. and then hearing you sing at high C with all of this equipment is just fascinating. I'm like <laughs> speechless right now. Uh, I'm glad to hear that it doesn't hurt, uh, that you were also able to sing so well. You said you mm -hmm. weren't warmed up, but yeah. you did sound <laughs> yeah. the, the nasal spray was new to me, so I think that's great. You that know? was done without lidocaine. Most of the time we put lidocaine in, okay. and that way you don't feel it at all in the nose. Oh. I don't know if that would have been more pleasant for you, but sometimes that interferes with what's going on down in the throat. Mm -hmm. That's one reason not to use lidocaine. Wow. This may be related to formants. It's optimize the, the uh, arrangement of everything in the vocal tract to hit all of those formants and yeah. really you know get them as as lined up as possible to get that full projected sound yeah. absolutely yeah we weren't using the stroboscopy when he was singing just to so i think to not add that extra buzz sound yeah. to the to the feed but but definitely when we were having him just do the sustained tones before yeah. that microphone on the neck was was coordinating the flashing light with how fast the vocal folds were, vib were vibrating so yeah. yeah we could see that fine vibration and, and mm -hmm. pliability of the vocal folds are you all recovered yeah Any i think <laughs> <laughs>